Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here to join us for Cruise Combos. So what is Cruise Combos? Cruise Combos is going to be a series of conversations, but very important, it's going to be casual conversations with cruise industry leaders across the globe. As the founder of Lemonade, I want to welcome you to this experience. I really hope you enjoy and also have a little bit of fun. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, you're the zest. Awesome. I'm so excited. I have four amazing people here. And I want to introduce you. We'll start with Anna. Anna, tell us who you are. Hello, uh, I'm Anna Silva. I'm the Operations Supervisor here in Port Everglades. Amazing. Shannon. My mute was, sorry about cutting. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. So, Shannon McKee. I am the president of Access Cruise and one of the co-founders of Zelia and the managing director of Banana Coast Tours. So I have a lot of hats. Amazing. No, you definitely do. And you're, you're doing amazing juggling everything. <laughs> Natalie, tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Natalie Allaby. I'm the cruise development manager for Port St. John uh, in New Brunswick in Eastern Canada on the beautiful Bay of Funday, otherwise known as St. Awesome. So repping today. So excited <laughs> to be here. Amazing. I have the same shirt on. No, I'm just joking. I should. I should. <laughs> you should, buddy. You should. Simone, tell us who you are. Hi, Claudine, and hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, the invitation. I'm delighted to be in such a great and beautiful panel. My name is uh, Simone Maraschi, and I'm the Managing Director of uh, CruiseGate Hamburg. We are a subsidiary of the uh, Hamburg Ports Authority, and uh, we uh, handle the cruise terminals in the port of Hamburg. Amazing, amazing. So welcome to this Lemonade experience. Welcome to Cruise Combos. Let's get started. The first question we always ask is, share with us your favorite childhood memory of travel. I'm going to start with Shannon, because I think she has a really, really good one. Go, you Shannon. know, I really thought on this a lot, Claudine, because, you know, for me, my, my travel as a child actually wasn't that exciting. Um, our vacations as, as a child were really spent um, camping. <laughs> if you can imagine, I grew up, you know, camping and, and I didn't, I didn't even see the ocean until I was 17 years old. So um, the, the memory that I want to think about and that I love so much that I really wanted to share today was about my mother because my mother was the same. We, we, she grew up in Indiana. We, I grew up in Texas. And so when I started working on cruise ships, when I turned 23 years old, the first thing I wanted to do, of course, is share my experiences with, with my family. And so my mother, I managed to get my mother on board a ship and we were going to Bermuda. And when we went to Bermuda and I took her there, I mean, it was the most amazing experience. She had never been out of the country that time. She had never been out of the country. And I remember I had arranged to go water skiing that day because I grew up water skiing on the, on the local lakes in, in Texas. And so we went water skiing. She went out there water skiing and she fell in the water and she came out of the water and she's like, oh my God, Shannon, you have got to get new sunscreen. And I said, why? What's wrong with the sunscreen, mom? She goes, it's so salty. I go, salty? What are you talking about? It was the water. She'd never been in salt water before. And I just, I, I looked at that. I was like, oh my God, mom, it's salt water. And she's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. But just, you know, for me, once I started and I, I went on and off into the cruise ship, it was really about sharing those experiences with my family, with my mother and my father. And she would come and sail with me all the time when I was on board. And those are some of my fondest memories um, is, is, really, is really being able to bring my family out to these amazing, amazing destinations that I was able to explore um, once I started working on board cruise ships. I love that. I love that. You, a memory you'll never forget, right? Oh yeah, no. And, and now everybody knows about her. 
You she was like the highlight on the ship. Every crew member on the ship knew her. She would go, we, we'd come back on and say, show your crew card. And they would make her show a card. They would just let her walk on. They're like, oh, hello, Joanne, how are you? She knew all the crew on I was with, I think it was the chief electrician who had gone out to dinner with us and he came back on and they're like, crew card. And they're, and they're like, oh, hi, Joanne, come on in. And he was like, wait, what? She, she doesn't even work here. And she comes through the crew gangway, you know her name? We're like, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. So special, so special. Yes. Thanks for sharing, Shannon. You're so welcome. I'm going to go to Natalie. Um, I have quite a few fond childhood memories of traveling um, with my family. I was very fortunate to go on some great vacations growing up, but I think if I had to pick uh, my most fondest, I'll give a little plug to the east coast of Canada and visiting nearby province, uh, Prince Edward Island, where my grandparents lived in Charlottetown. And I fondly remember every summer packing up the car to the brim and heading over to Prince Edward Island, which now there's a bridge to get there, but at the time you had to take a ferry. And I remember the ferry being really exciting because there was, you know, a lounge and you could get fun snacks. And maybe that was like foreshadowing for my love of cruise now when I was a kid. Um, but taking the ferry over to Prince Edward Island and then my grandparents had um, a great cottage right on the beach. And I just remember uh, spending summer days when the tide would go out, there would be miles of uh, sandbars that we would play around in and walk through. And the part of Prince Edward Island that they live in, the sand is really red. Uh, it's almost like a clay-like red sand, so much so that it actually like stains your clothes. And if you're in it long enough, it'll actually like stain your hands and your feet. And I just remember as a kid just being so filthy and playing in the sunshine. So that's definitely a fond memory of mine. I love it. I love it. And I bet you're doing that with your kids now too, right? Absolutely. My grandmother's still alive over there. She's going to be 95 this year. Yeah, we feel a tradition to this day. Wow. That's amazing. Happy early birthday to your grandmother then. That's right. <laughs> yes. I love it. Simone, go for it. Yeah, um, well, um, when I was six, uh, my dad decided to uh, take the family to um, a trip, and it was my uh, trip abroad. Uh, we didn't know that he was planning to drive his car and uh, sleep in a tent with the, the whole family. Uh, we, we drove to England um, from Milan. I'm originally from, uh, from Italy. And uh, it became uh, a, a long journey, uh, like, you know, the Camino de Santiago, if you know uh, <laughs> what, I'm, what I mean. But um, it, it was amazing because, uh, I mean, it was 1981, uh, so I'm, I'm a few years uh, old as well. And, you know, we didn't have mobile phone internet. So, um, you know, we, we arrived most of the time in places late at night where uh, there were no campings uh, open. And I remember once in, in near London, um, we, we, yeah, we, we needed to camp somewhere because, you know, we, we had to sleep. I was six, my brother was eight. And uh, we saw this beautiful villa, huge, huge villa with a beautiful garden. And, uh, you know, my dad just stopped the car. He walked in front of the, to the door of the, of the house. And, you know, when, when the guy came out and he saw, you know, a family with kids, he said, well, of course, you, just, can you, you can just put your tent here in the, in the, in the garden, and, you know. So we, we, we slept in his garden, and uh, in the morning, he came with, uh, um, with the tea and, and biscuits um, for, the, for the whole family. So, uh, you know, it, it, was just, uh, it was just, I mean, it was a simple trip, I guess, but it's just the, the memory and, the, you know, the, you know, the whole journey that made such a you know, huge uh, impact on me. And, uh, yeah, that I love it. Great story. Great story. You might have to reenact that now when your little one turns six. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anna, share with us. Oh, well, it's an epic fail, actually. Uh, for my parents' 20th wedding anniversary, they went on a cruise, and it was the vacation they had. And it was the summer, uh, the kids, we, the children were still in high school, so we stayed home. They went on this vacation, they came back. Oh, it was wonderful, it was great. We'll go again next year as a family vacation. You'll have graduated high school, like we'll make it our last family trip. So the next summer rolls around, they book the cruise, six of us get on it. 
it was so rough. They closed the deck. They closed the pool. There were um, sea snakes stuck in the rail. We were uh, yes. So that was our that was our big family vacation. But it's one we still talk about and laugh about because as great as their like the the one they went on for their anniversary was, we had 180 degrees when they took all of us. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Have you been on a cruise since, Anna? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't deter me. It's just, yeah, they're like, oh, have you been on a cruise? I'm like, yeah, one was not so hot. The other ones were good. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your epic fail. I love it. <laughs> Let's jump into some questions. So the first question is going to go to Natalie, Anna, and Simone. And the question is, what is your port doing to stay top of mind? I'm going to start with Anna, because we just... We're with you. Let's keep going with you. Okay. Share with us. What are you guys um, doing? We're doing a lot. We're, uh, we've taken a multimedia approach. So we are doing radio interviews. We're doing op-ed pieces in the paper. We're posting like crazy on all kinds of channels and social media. Uh, court staff is doing independent and panel discussions like one. Uh, we've done some future, uh, court futures webinars. Uh, and because we're so diverse, we're also doing uh, import-export webinars. So we're kind of keeping a holistic approach to keeping the port at top of mind. Uh, a lot of our social media, we have been um, promoting and celebrating Black History Month. We promoted and celebrated uh, Women's History Month. Um, we did a beautiful drone flyover for Employee Appreciation Day. Um, we recently did... Uh, our parking lot for Terminal 4 was finished, so we had newspaper coverage on that. And we just on Monday did a virtual crane thing, um, three ZZ profile uh, super post Panamax cranes, the first of their kind. So we just got those commissioned and we did a, a big virtual commissioning event on Monday. That is so cool. I want to go check that out. That, that, <laughs> yes. that sounds so cool. Like, who gets to see that? That's amazing. I would love to see it exactly. live. Right? Thank you for sharing. Simone? Yeah, I mean, you know, despite the uh, the lockdowns, uh, which we had a few now, and the the, the pandemic, we have been uh, we've been quite busy because we were able to start last summer very with uh, cruise station. Uh, we had the few the first uh, calls at the end of uh, June, and uh, you know, we went, went on till the end of uh, we're kind of very busy with the, uh, we know, with the protocols, with uh, the, you know, hygiene uh, measures that, that to uh, kept in place in the terminals. Um, and, you know, we, we, we had a, also some projects which uh, we, we kind of uh, uh, carried on during the, the summer. We um, uh, certified the uh, Europa 2 for the, uh, um, for the usage of uh, short power system in Hamburg. Um, and we uh, actually um, took over a new cruise terminal, middle of July last year. Uh, so we were really busy uh, all these uh, activities. And uh, but we had also time for, for instance, uh, I like to mention this because one uh, one colleague of mine uh, took a, a online course at the University of Chile. Um, and uh, he grad it was a graduate course for uh, a development of uh, city ports. Uh, um, so you know we, we try to to uh, keep the, the team uh, busy also with uh, with this kind of activities. But I would say um, you know again, despite the, uh, the the lockdown and everything, we, we have been uh, we've been very busy. Excellent, thank you, Natalie. Yeah, uh, we are busy too uh, in the Port of St. John, uh, despite not having um, a cruise season last year. And unfortunately, this coming season is also uh, going to be a quiet one for cruise, but we are a diversified port. So uh, the rest of our port is still busy and bustling with our, with our cargo business. But from a cruise standpoint, I think we are kind of taking the approach of like a three prongs. So certainly, you know, the first one, staying in touch with our our friends in the cruise industry and our cruise line clients at the cruise lines, um, you know, keeping them up to date on resumption efforts in Canada, what we're doing to kind of move the needle on, on getting back, getting back to business, so to speak, and what's going on in the city and what we're doing to prepare for when cruise does return. 
Um, we're also still nurturing our um, important relationships with our travel agents because we have a great network of travel agents throughout the U.S. who are our in selling destinations. We're so even though you know we don't have ships calling um, this season, we've got uh, calls on the books for 2022 and we need those cabins filled. So we're working on destination training with the various travel agent partners that we have. We want them to survive. We want them to be educated so that they can in turn fill those cabins up. And then I think the third prong would be, um, you know, our, our community and making sure that we're staying top of mind in the community, um, reassuring um, our stakeholders and everyone that loves and adores crews that it will be back, it will be safe when it comes back, um, you know, we're going to have all the right protocols in place and everyone that's missing those, um, you know, beloved passengers and all the tourism dollars that come along with it. Um, you know, just keeping the, the topic of cruise socialized in the community is uh, part of our ongoing efforts right now. So all three areas are kind of equal priorities for us right now. I love it. I love it. And Natalie, because I am close to the port, I'll put out a little bit of a shout out. You guys just hired a customer experience person, an amazing, amazing person. And we, you, you did some training yourself, right? We did actually, yeah. So uh, we have a new um, a new person on our cruise development team, and we actually um, kind of changed around this new title as a customer experience coordinator. Her name is Becky Knox. She is a rock star, and she has recently done some specialized training in the area of um, customer experience management. And we're building an entire um, framework for both our port community as well as you know the outside uh, tourism community on how to create that wow when the passengers do come back and how we can move the needle on uh, you know ongoing improvements to our customer satisfaction ratings so yeah it's been uh, it's it's been nothing short of busy uh, despite not having crews this last little while we're, we're keeping busy and you're doing an epic job especially taking after, you know, taking over after, well, you worked with her for a long time, but shout out to Miss Betty McMillan, well know. known in the industry, shout out to yes. her. Yes, so our, our <laughs> beloved Betty McMillan, she <laughs> retired last July in the middle of a pandemic after building the business in St. John for over 30 years. Uh, she's doing well, and uh, every time I talk to her, she says, give everybody a hello, and she, uh, she misses everyone, and she is itching to go on a cruise, let me tell you. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Thank you. Shannon, talk to us about Zelia, because you're just, what are you up to now? Eight cruise lines on board? So Zelia, for those of you that don't know what Zelia is, is a destination platform that we built for the cruise industry to bring the, the cruise destinations of the world together on a common platform that's standardized to make the information useful as well as accessible to everyone. So we've been working at this about two years. We had signed some big contracts just back in like February and March. We, we signed actually with Cruise Europe and, and so happy to have Hamburg online. We also signed with Canada New England at that point in time. Glad to have all those ports online. And, and then the shutdown happened. So you know, the, the, the way that the clients were working was different. And so what we've done is we've gone out um, during the, the shutdown time, we've continued to attract new ports online. We have about 400 ports online already, as well as work with the Cruise Lines Direct to sign preferred partnership agreements. Because what we we're trying to do is make sure that we get away from the idea of you know sending emails all the time, having jump drives that we're handing over, you know, it, it, it becomes difficult. How can we work smarter? We all have the same amount of time. Everybody in this world, we all have the same 24 hours a day. So how can we make that 24 hours? How can we make that more useful? How can we be more productive with our days? And I think Zelia is a way to do that because if every port has their information on there and it's, so it's an easy access to the cruise line executives, they can get on there at any time and find the information that they're looking for without having to send emails, without having to search through their jump drives um, to find it because it's always the same. So yes, we've been working really, really hard over the last year to, to bring more ports online. We're getting rave reviews from the cruise line executives um, and, and the itinerary planners. You know, even the itinerary planners, I, I laugh, I, I, I remember back to a story that I had with um, Claudius when we were talking to Crystal Cruises about signing a partnership agreement with us. And he goes, but I know all the ports of the world. I go, 
well, you do, Claudius. I said, but what about the rest of the crystal team? What happens when they have a question? Where do they go? He goes, to me. <laughs> I said, exactly. How does, how does that help you? It, it doesn't because now everybody's coming to you. Wouldn't you rather have a resource for them that everybody can use? He goes, you're absolutely right. I'm in. And I said, wonderful. So yes, it's been a very busy time. It's been a time of creation. It's been a time of working with the ports and the, and the cruise lines to understand what else we can do in Zelia to develop it, to make it even more dynamic and more value oriented for everyone that's using the platform. So we're excited. I'll just jump in there, Shannon, that as a port user of Zelia, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's super user friendly and we love that we have another outlet to share all of our information and it just keeps and we're really glad to be a part. Thank you. Thank you. What, what? That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Good job, Natalie. Yes. <laughs> Anna. We're going to get, we're gonna get Anna on there soon enough, too. Oh, my. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh Shannon lands a deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you, how ready do your, does your port feel? to receive cruise ships. Anna, how ready do you guys feel? Oh, we're ready, yeah. Bring them on. Uh, <laughs> Bring them on. The end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, we've, we actually started getting ready last June, July, because we have Valley Area Ferry running between here and the Bahamas. So we were able to do a, the passenger ferry service. So we got the social distancing down, we got the signage, we got the spacing, um, we got the, the cleaning protocols in place. Uh, so we're ready. We even, we installed a pharma box, which is basically like a vending machine of a drugstore. So in case you forget your mask or you want extra hand sanitizer or even uh, sunblock, salty or not for Shannon's mom, um, you can buy all of those things outside the terminal before you walk in. So we're ready. We've got our, we've got our, our, uh, our messaging up on social media and about because you do need to wear a mask inside the building inside the terminal for county property so we have that posted on social media and we have it posted outside the doors we're ready I love it thank you so much Anna Simone mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> as we last year and as we last year last summer with uh, with cruise operation and we had to do the setup for all the the terminals we um we are of course uh, ready also right now it's just a matter of uh, updating uh, some of the protocols because the uh, pandemic has, has changed the situation has also changed compared to uh, to last summer but you know we had a uh, medical area for testing we did testing already um, in in the terminals um and uh, you know, it's it, we're just waiting that the politics uh, replies with a green light. You know, I think we're all pretty much in the same situation. Um, but I can tell cruise lines are are really on standby. You know, pushing on the gas pedal uh, to see you know uh, the first ships uh, coming. And um, you know, I'm kind kind of confident that um, within I would say six seven weeks uh, we will be able to see some. Uh, some uh, slowly restart from uh, from Amber from Germany. I love that. I'm going to I'm going to ask you. Can you share with everyone? You shared with me a story about what your port did to help the community while there's no cruise ships there. Why don't you share that with us? It's such a great story. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we, uh, we decided to, um, well, we were, first of all, we were looking for some, uh, activities to do on our parking lots in the, at the terminal because the, you know, the area was, uh, was kind of, um, and we, um, had the idea to, uh, work with, together with, um, yeah, with a company in Hamburg and open the first, uh, uh drive-in, uh, uh, cinema, uh, in, uh, in Hamburg which turned into uh, an amazing uh, car concert location. Um, we had over 83 uh, shows uh, and uh, around 35,000 uh, guests that to uh, shows. Uh, yeah, it was amazing because, you know, in a, in a time where culture and entertainment were not allowed, we could provide to the community uh, at least, you know, some uh, happy, moments and uh, for me it was very nice to see 
people approaching the port, not as a place of logistic and, and ships operations, but also as a place of, you know, social entertaining. And, and, uh, and I think uh, we will do the same this summer. We have two big uh, uh, companies that are planning with some uh, very cool uh, concerts. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a huge air front of the tunnel so that we can operate the terminal and also provide, a, 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 you know, an area for, for the concert. That, that's for us the important thing. That, you know, uh, the position to, but uh, yeah, that was the uh, cruise in was the name of the concert. I cruise love in. it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, that is awesome. And kudos to you guys for being so innovative, right? That's amazing. My team, that was the creativity of my team. Yeah, <laughs> you have an epic team, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, what did you get? How prepared are you? Yeah, I think we're in um, a bit of a unique um, circumstance right now in St. John, New Brunswick, because, um, you know, not by our choice, um, it's a Transport Canada decision right now in the country uh, that cruising cannot occur. It didn't occur last season. It's not going to occur this season. Um, and so I think in the meantime, we are putting all the right steps and protocols in place so that we will be ready. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we actually, in Canada, we have formed a national coalition of um, all cruise ports across the country um, under the cap of ACPA that I think Nancy was talking about um, in your cruise combos the last time around, uh, which is the uh, Association of Canadian Port Authorities. We formed a national cruise committee to have formalized and standardized uh, protocols across the entire country. So we can present that to Transport Canada, socialize all of these various uh, topics of, you know, cruise resumption to the right people at the heads of government and uh, hopefully get back on track for next year. So, um, you know, we feel very confident in St. John as do all of our partners across the country that um, we will be ready. And when the time is right, we, uh, we can't wait to get um, those ships back in our beautiful harbors. Love it. Shannon, you work with a lot of different places and people. What have you seen? What are people doing to get ready? No, we, we, we do. We work with a lot of different ports as a part of Access Cruise, uh, as well as Zelia. And so, you know, we've seen a lot of different things. I think that a lot of it has been education, that a lot of the ports that I have worked with, they're going to be first. So we look to ports like with, with what Simone has doing, been doing. Um, we, we knew we weren't going to be first. So we have really taken the approach of trying to learn from the ports that, that we're going to come first. Um, I have a lot of conversations every week with, with many different ports and organizations trying to understand the best lessons that they've learned. And I, I, you know, I give kudos to, to Port Everglades and, and St. John and the Hamburg, all that they've done and preparedness and, and readiness that they are. Um, you know, Haifa is, is one of our clients that we've been working with and we're so excited because we had the big announcement with Royal Caribbean uh, that we're going to see turnarounds. We've worked for years to try to get somebody to turn around in Haifa and we've always gotten the no, 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 no. But you know what? At, at some point in time, that little bug got in their ear and said, you know what? Maybe we could do a turnaround in Haifa and take Israeli passengers. You have no idea how many conversations we've had about that. Um, and, and it came to fruition. Which is, which is wonderful in, in the fact that we've been able to do that in these unfortunate times, but we've seen you know, some positives. We've, we've seen some creation that has come out of this too. So a lot of our ports, again, we're sitting, we're waiting, we're watching, we're adopting the best practices and principles that we're seeing come out from the leaders in the industry, such as Port Everglades and Miami that have shared on, on previous um, you know, on conference calls that, we, that we've listened into to understand what those best practices are. We also work with the state of Hawaii. Um, so, you know, the state's kind of, we've, we've kind of sat back and said, hey, listen, we're never going to be first um, in this. So let's take the lessons learned from the others and then we will apply those when the time comes right. Um, so there's, there's so much going on. I feel like at times that we're, we're drinking from a, a fire hose of, of information and how the, the changes from when we started, you know, last, last March and we thought it was a couple weeks and it was going to be a couple months. And I remember talking to somebody and going, oh, it's not going to happen until September. I'm like, oh, that's ludicrous. September? No way. You know, and here we are 
a year later and you know it's changed so much and i think there's still a lot of changes to come so you know we can prepare but at the end of the day i think that our our philosophy has been the fact is is that we are not in control so we kind of have to embrace the fact that we're not in control so you know what can we control what can we do to prepare and continue to plan and prepare. And in, in some ways you say, you know, you want to say ready, aim, fire, but it's at this point in time, it's ready, fire, aim. You know, we have to start somewhere. And I think that we're as ready as we can be. We know it won't be perfect, but but we're ready to accept this back in all of our destination we've been working with. I love that. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Well, you and yeah, Anna, go for it. I can add uh, to what you said about businesses. Yes, it's we have done. Uh, we have taken a look and gone into all kinds of areas about best practices and who's doing what. Like I said, we have Valeria. So, what are you doing in Spain, Valley area? So they shared us their terminal best practices. We went out to the airport, Fort Lauderdale Airport's three miles away. What are you guys doing? And got those best practices. Um, we have gone to Delta Airlines. We've gone to hotels. We even went to the grocery stores just to. See See her laying out there, queuing and lining up, so we could get an idea of what was available, what was out there, and what people were comfortable with. So, uh, yes, for everybody out there, finding best practices, and not only in the cruise industry, but expand your circle to other industries, even if you don't think they're completely relevant to you. See what everybody's doing. Get as much information as possible. Great point. Great point, Anna. I'm gonna go back to you. Tell me a little bit about the community. What are you guys doing to prepare for the community or what kind of outreach are you doing with the community? Have you done anything? Yes, actually at the beginning we were, we were hitting social media hard explaining to the community that we were working with the Department of Health and CDC and the Coast Guard and our cruise line partners to make sure that everyone was safe. We weren't gonna overburden the medical and hospital infrastructure um, on land. So we did a big push for that. Uh, for better or for worse. Now the emphasis has have been off of us and it has gone to spring break <laughs> and college kids coming down here. So that's kind of taken the onus off of cruise for a little bit and the, the local communities uh, is dealing with the spring breakers and what to do with them and how to keep themselves safe. Right. Oh my. Oh my. That's a mission right there, Anna. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Natalie, do you want to share something about the community that you guys are doing? Sure, yeah. yeah we actually have um, have formalized quite a quite a, um, uh, an initiative, I guess you could say, uh, with Port St. John and kind of keeping the topic of cruise uh, positive and being open and transparent with our community. We've actually formed um, what we're calling a business and community cruise liaison committee. So um, that's been formed. Uh, we meet monthly and what it was is um, a pool of people that we identified as either key stakeholders in the community or people that are in positions where they could be great disseminators for us of our messaging. Again, you know, it could be positive, could be negative, but we would just want that open dialogue, um, that opportunity for feedback and for sharing. And it's been going exceptionally well. We also have, um, you know, some local residents on the, um, such as business uh, people that we have on the committee. There's local residents as well, like people that live in nearby condominiums to the terminals who are really wondering what a cruise day and what cruise passengers, what that experience is going to look like when they do resume. And just kind of putting anyone who maybe uh, isn't at ease with the concept that, you know, sharing with them what we're working on, um, you know, trying to describe for them as best we know what um, the future of cruising will look like. And uh, we know that that first year may be a bit of a transition before it gets back to, you know, the good old days of, of completely normal. It might take a couple of seasons, but uh, we know that that diet has started and it's a really, uh, you know, the group is really gelling and uh, it's a great way to have champions be on our behalf, um, you know, in the business community so that the port doesn't take, have to take all the onus of sharing that information. We're, we're passing it on, we're providing those tools and they're sharing it out to their networks from there. So it's a strategy that so far is really working for us in St. John. And um, I think it's making everyone feel much more connected and um, feeling much more optimistic about 
you know, we will get this right. And when cruising is back, it's going to be safe to do so. And that, you know, we're working on the right things. Great. Simone? I'd like to uh, add something, uh, Claudine, um, to what just uh, Natalie said. Um, because, I mean, that's exactly also the, the approach we, uh, we, we have here. Uh, we, we decided to engage more with the community together with a few strong st stakeholders because we, we, we felt that the communication was not uh, clear, was not and open a few, uh, I mean, we had open a new YouTube, YouTube channel, uh, channels mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, to provide videos and, and you know, quick communication to, um, to, the, uh, to the community. Uh, the fact is, I mean, once we, uh, and hopefully it will be very soon, but once we are done with, with the uh, COVID, uh, we're going to have, other, uh, you know, uh, con controversial uh, um, things that, uh, that uh, it could be sustainability, it could be, you know, uh, emission. Uh, so we think that uh, it's very important to, uh, to approach the community with clear facts, with clear information, uh, because unfortunately there's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, miscommunication around and, uh, and most of the time people that are not in the business are very strong influence, you know, from, uh, from this kind of uh, information. I think that's a great point, Simone, in that, you know, it's just not a COVID specific pandemic task force that's, you know, this liaison committee. We absolutely, you know, the early signs of success that we're having, like we know that this will be a great group that we can lean on when COVID's all said and done and well behind us, can't wait for that day, um, that you know we can lean on these people to cover off other topics that are um, up to groups in our community, things like sustainability, um, you know, environmental issues, um, you know, any various topic at the time, we want to have this, this really clear community stakeholder that we can engage with and, and uh, move the needle forward on, on topics that are um, pressing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Anna, share with us about WISTA. Sure. I'm a strong uh, supporter. Is, yeah. <laughs> WISTA is a Women's International Shipping and Trading Association. Uh, we are an international organization. We're in 53 countries. Uh, we have about 4,000 members. And um, basically, we're a networking group meant to encourage, support, and promote women in uh, management and leadership positions within the maritime industry crew, cargo, uh, internal operations, government inspectors, uh, all of that. So that's WISTA. Uh, we have one in Canada, uh, and your Canadian WISTA is spread out East Coast, West Coast, and I believe Montreal. Um, but yeah, we're in 53 countries. It's a wonderful network. And especially during COVID, we kind of, we were always active uh, with one another and engaged. But now, especially, we're, we're, sharing best practices, we're finding information out. I must have gotten, in the first month of COVID, I probably got 16 or 17 phone calls from WIST women or members I don't normally speak to. What's going on? What's really going on? Is the port open? Is the port closed? Is there cruise ships coming in? Uh, so we've been really relying heavily on the network to kind of disseminate the correct information again um, and to just kind of support really, and uh, some people have furloughed or laid off We've been using that to, to find them new career opportunities. Thank you so much. So if anybody has any questions, they can contact me. <laughs> What's your phone number? You, I want to know. Exactly. <laughs> Shannon's going to call you. I want to know more, Anna, for sure. Sure. Sure, <laughs> Shannon. I'll, I'll, I'll get you on LinkedIn. We're awesome. good. <laughs> oh, look at that. Awesome. Awesome. Already connecting. <laughs> yes. Networking. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> Talking about networking, you guys, uh, you guys do a lot of that online. I've seen you guys all very active on all the social media channels. I saw somebody post yesterday. Natalie, you said you were going to use the word pivot on this. I don't know yeah, how many I times I have not either. heard the word once. <laughs> I think I think it's because I've been consciously like trying to avoid pivot and shift, and even though we've done a lot of pivoting and shifting in St. Oh, John. there we go. We got we got we got it in. We got it in. <laughs> and thank you to Natalie for putting it out there because I like I started writing down what are other words can we use other than pivot and shift. You know, let's let's find something new. That's why I put it out there, Claudine, that you could come up with a word just for cruise with your creativity. <laughs> it could be. Start working. Start working. I'll start on that. I <laughs> love it. I love it. 
This is going so well. Thank you so much for taking part. I'm going to ask you the last question. Unless if any of you want to drop something else in. Anybody? You're good. Okay, I'm going to ask you the last question. And that is, who has influenced you the most in your life? It's a hard one. But we want to get to know you. Who has influenced you the most in your life? Natalie, you go first. Oh my gosh, Claudine. Um, you know, I think I would have to go with sort of a, a bit of a cliche answer. That, you know, my parents were incredibly influential in my life. Um, you know, they were both, uh, you know, successful, um, you know, working parents and my mom was an entrepreneur and, um, you know, I just always looked up to them and the life that they were fortunate enough to provide me I always want to aspire to provide that to my family in the future and you know now I have a family of my own and uh, so it all kind of came full, full circle for me from the influence that they had on my life but then I think also too um, you know I had some really great influencers from you know even in school teachers and you know professors in university um, even some past bosses of mine in, in previous roles, um, you know, I've always um, taken the opportunity to learn from someone sort of higher up the food chain than me. There's always something that you can learn and grow from um, if you take the opportunity to, uh, you know, to ask the right questions and to get to know them. And it helps you advance, you know, who you want to be uh, going forward. So I've had a number of people. I've been very fortunate um, to have, you know, been surrounded by some really great people in my life and still, still to this day. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Simone? Yeah, I think I will echo what uh, Natalie just said. I mean, it's, it's, um, I agree. I've been also first but of uh, people, I would say, my, my past, but uh, I mean, my parents, the family remains definitely the, the main source of, uh, of uh, you know, of uh, trust and, and, uh, and, and therefore, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be the person I am um, if, if, you know, if I, um, you know, if I wouldn't uh, have had my parents and, um, and uh, yeah, I, I can only say um, my family, uh, also my brother, of course, I have an um, older brother um, in the, um, the, the thing that I think most, uh, um, uh, yeah, influenced us was the fact that the, my family always gave us the uh, opportunity to, uh, to do things and to go abroad and, uh, and uh, which is not common for Italian family, I, I would say, you know, they tend to be, uh, to stay home and spend a lot of time with, with the family, which is beautiful. It's amazing. But uh, we, we kind of were pushed since uh, we were kids, you know, to, to do this kind of experience. I, you know, I, I was mentioning before, first uh, trip abroad with six with my family, but I spent my three, three months in England alone when I was 11 years old. And uh, which, you know, it's kind of crazy, you know, if you, if you, if you think uh, and, and, you know, starting from that, um, I, I've always been very open minded. And I think that's the most important things nowadays to 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 uh, to feel to, you know, to see the, the world, you know, and not just the country we live in. And that's the most uh, important things that I've learned from my parents. Wow, beautiful question for you. Do you only have one brother, one sibling? Yes. Okay. I was yeah. going to say, if that, if you just mentioned that one and you had more, you know, it would get a little... No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> I would get in trouble. <laughs> I'm no. just joking with you. <laughs> Anna, you're next. Uh, uh, well, you sent out this question, I was thinking, and I unfortunately came up with another fail answer. Um, I think someone who had a... I won't be obviously no naming names, but someone who taught me how not to treat people and the person I didn't want to be. Um, like just, and I think that's important uh, to know where your line in the sand is, like how far are you willing to go before you're like, I don't want to be that person. Um, but on the positive side, while I was listening to everyone else speak so nicely about <laughs> the people in their lives, um, I think when I became a godmother, uh, just having my, goddaughter knowing someone was looking up to me and I was setting I was going to be a role model and I am a role model that had a huge influence on everything I kind of relooked at my life and I'm like all right I 
want her to be proud of me for this, this, and this. And how can I, how can I set the best example for her? So be my goddaughter, Elizabeth. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank Thank you. And thank you for both examples. That's exactly what I said. Just said it again. <laughs> Shannon, go for it. Yeah, I thought it was everybody. I kind of really sat down and I thought about it. I was in the shower this morning going, oh my God, what am I going to say about this? But I, it really goes back to the same thing that, that Simone and Natalie said as far as it's cliche, but it's my parents. My parents, uh, you know, and, and my sister as well, and I only have one, so I don't, I don't have to get in trouble there. Um, but we have, my parents, I, when I grew up, in, in, again, in, in Texas, my dad was, had his own business, and I worked, he hired me, and, and I worked for him at the front desk, and he really taught me the work ethic. I was, you know, they say that, that it could be the toughest job or the easiest job you ever have working for a family member. And I can tell you that it was the toughest job I have ever had is working for my father. He was so hard on me and he had business partners and the business partner would say, you're doing a great job, Shannon. You know, I, I would sit, I, would, I, I was the receptionist. I came in and the next day they fired the receptionist, not because of me, but because of something else that was going on. So they just kind of threw me in that position. But it, everybody looked at it like, uh oh, here comes the boss's daughter coming to take over. And I thought, oh my God, it was, it was tough. And I remember after my first year being there, the, the, um, the, oh, the, I, I went in for my review and my dad wasn't a part of the review. It was all the other partners were there and it was like a law tax firm. And they said, you're doing a great job, you know, all of this stuff. And I'm like, great, can I have a raise? And they're like, uh, so they went back. They all went to lunch and they came back, Fort Partners came back and they said, well, we, we went to lunch and we talked about it and everybody voted yes for a raise except for one. I said, let me guess, my dad. He goes, they go, that's exactly right. He was the only one that said no. <laughs> I was like, dad, seriously? But I have to say, you know, what he taught me as far as business ethics was, I mean, it, it really was a lesson learned. At the same time, I had my mother who was, who was completely not, I wouldn't say it, but she was entrepreneur wasn't a business owner she you know she took care of the family she did work she was a beautician um, then she worked a few days a week but really she devoted her time for her family and what she taught me is for the zest of life you know she's she's about as zesty as they could come uh, to use her word Claudine and she had a love and a passion for life and she knew how to find fun anywhere no matter what we were doing she found a way to make it fun I mean we would go, as, as I said, I mean, we had, you know, meager upbringing when, when I was younger and our vacations were camping and, and things like these, like full works that would find um, lodge type places that we, we would go. We would come up with these crazy games and people would be coming us going, well, can we play with you? Can we, what game is this? It was just something that my mother had made up that would keep us entertained for hours and hours. So, you know, I, I think I had both sides. So I have the, the business side with my father and, and at the same time, I had the, that, that, that zest for life with my mother that, you know, even with my children, we can find fun wherever we go. We make the most out of whatever we're doing, um, you know, whether it's, you know, at, at the lake or if we're traveling abroad, you know, they, they're getting to do a lot of things that I may not have gotten to do when I was younger, but, you know, we still love the simple stuff. You know, it's just as important to spend time with the family and the simple things. So I think my parents really instilled that in in me. And then I have to give just a shout out to to a woman that that actually um, I, I shouted out before, which was when I worked on cruise ships. I was I was a young um, woman on, on cruise ships back in the in the '90s, and somebody was a cruise director that I really looked up to, and her name is Dottie Colossa. She's still a cruise director out on cruise ships. She works for Oceania. And, um, you know, I really was just a sponge, learning everything I possibly could from her. There weren't a whole lot of female cruise directors out there at that point in time, um, but I really aspired to be like her in so many ways, and, and she really taught me the ropes. And, you know, it's the same thing that my family taught me, which is work hard, play hard. So work hard, 
but at the same time, that time off, you made sure to make the most of it. Um, so I really, I, I pay tribute to her as, as a mentor, a female at a time in, in the industry where there weren't a lot of females in leadership roles in the cruise industry. So that's, that's what, I, what I wanted to share. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I think we all, I just want to hang out with your mom. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm getting could. out of this. I wish everybody could. Sadly, I lost her many oh. years ago. So, but uh, yep, I miss her every day and, and she was somebody special. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It mm. sounds like an amazing person for sure. Well, my friends, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Anna, thank you for coming. Natalie, Simone, Shannon, really appreciate it. Thank you for taking part in Cruise Convos and have an amazing day, guys.